1986, Vancouver held a World's Fair to commemorate the city's centennial. Dubbed Expo 86, it drew crowds from around the world to marvel at the city's achievements in transportation infrastructure, like the newly minted SkyTrain. How do you do? Glad to have you here. This building was the Expo Center, built to impress and inform visitors to the fair. Its original intention was to be torn down after the fair, but it was adopted by Science World in 1987, the year I was born. As a kid, I would visit Science World often. I was interested in something called the building of the future. Curious to see if this claim would hold true, I've spent the last 36 years traveling through time and space to the year 2025 to find out for myself. In the race against climate change, we often focus on new, shiny technologies. But what about the buildings already around us? Canada alone has 482,000 commercial and public buildings, each a silent contributor to our carbon footprint. While new constructions are becoming greener thanks to step codes and regulations, existing buildings remain our biggest challenge. In Metro Vancouver, roughly 26% of greenhouse gas emissions come from the built environment. That's all this. The issue is not isolated to Vancouver. All across the Pacific Northwest bioregion, cities are coming up with ways of lowering emissions from existing structures. Earlier this spring, the city of Seattle released a plan to reduce carbon emissions and energy use in nearly 200 city-owned buildings by 2042. The plan comes about eight months after San Francisco also pledged to lower carbon in its built environment with a $19.9 million grant. Clearly we can't rebuild Science World, or certainly an entire city, but maybe we can fix things. SES Consulting, a 15-member company founded in 1975, has worked with many companies to reduce energy consumption and building emissions. This is probably the most inspirational time of my entire career. Through comprehensive energy studies, they have created roadmaps for decarbonization, transforming outdated structures into beacons of sustainability. The traditional energy efficiency retrofits were things like lighting, but now we're looking at deep retrofits. So what do we need to do to, to eliminate 90% of the greenhouse gas emissions? We have to get innovative. Take Science World. It was never intended to be a building that lasts, but now it's an historic site. To make it live up to its name, SES is looking beyond a simple equipment upgrade. We're doing a deep energy retrofit of Science World that completely reimagines the facility. An 80% GHG reduction while simultaneously 40% energy reduction. We use things like heat pumps, we uh, insulate the buildings, we change the windows, use heat recovery technologies, and really advanced controls combined with renewable energy like solar power. Without insulation, heat usage rose in the winter months to keep the building warm. Now, from insulating the geodesic dome to installing air-to-water heat pumps and integrating used electric vehicle batteries for storage, Science World is becoming a science experiment in itself. We're going to build an 80-inch touchscreen that students can go in and learn about how energy is being generated and used, how cooling is getting created, so that they, uh, they can make people really comfortable with almost no energy. Planning began in 2021, before Science World secured provincial and federal funding to complete the work. With a $39 million budget, the goal is to keep the historic site around for the foreseeable future. And uh, we'll be able to generate more and more nerds. Everything has to be replaced at, at some point in time. So as a result of what we're doing, we're, we're getting some significant um, energy savings. The process has been mostly smooth and Science World has stayed open throughout construction. But adding HVAC machines to an iconic Vancouver landmark does come with some stress. I was out looking at the crane angle was like at about 67% as it was pulling up these, these chillers. And I was standing at the sidelines going, oh, you know, please don't drop the chillers. All this work begs the question, why risk altering an entire city or a landmark like Science World, which has fascinated many people, including myself, for decades? To one local company, it's better than demolition. Keeping that building and not tearing a building down and retrofitting is way more valuable because you're not now 
having to go back out into you know the mines and you know digging up more materials to try to now build a new building that's more efficient. SES, they're great. They're really, really great. Really innovative, really forward thinking. They will have done a good job. With provincial, state, and municipal governments in the Pacific Northwest pledging millions to retrofit everything from city-owned buildings and school districts to heritage homes built in the early 1900s, there's space for this sector to grow. Aside from avoiding landfill waste, the retrofitting process also presents the opportunity to reuse and recycle materials in other builds. Instead of it just going to landfill or stockpile, like we're trying to, we've created a connection with Habitat for Humanity to house some of those materials, but we also have an online marketplace that we've created. The Science World Project is just one of SES's contracts. They're currently working on the net zero certification of 1075 West Georgia and YVR's ambitious roadmap to net zero by 2030. What, what I see is the community continues to come together uh, to imagine how can we come up with solutions that, that go further, that go deeper, that, that really prove that sustainable buildings um, are possible. Through education programs and partnerships, SES is aiming to build a network of professionals equipped to tackle the climate crisis, one building at a time. We're a knowledge-based organization, so we're really good at sharing lessons learned and um, sharing our knowledge. Working with SES really matches the B Corp mantra of working for the people, the community, and the planet. So that really, that model really fits my beliefs and, and I believe also what the majority of our staff work towards as well. So that's why we're all passionate about saving the world and making a difference. As a kid, I came to this building because I was just interested in science. But now I can see how science is literally going to create a greener world. The Science World retrofits are expected to be done in time for the 40th anniversary of Expo 86 next year. Now then, how do I make this time machine go back the other way? <laughs>